coming up. We need to make sure that the knee is as stable as possible so that you can generate power and force off that when playing sports. Your ACL is an important ligament in your knee that keeps it sturdy, and Dr. Kyle Krupa shows you different ways to keep your ACL healthy. Then it's that time of year. Find out what to look for in a Christmas tree and where to get one to support a great cause. Plus, the health benefits of the many spices used in traditional Indian cuisine. All that and more today on SoFlo Health. And welcome to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. This is the Boys and Girls Club Miami-Dade. It's their famous Christmas tree lot that pops up here every year. And you've got about a week to get a tree because they go fast. There's not many traditions in Miami that are 70 years old, but this one is. And we're gonna learn more about this Christmas tree lot, what you can get here, and what the Boys and Girls Club does year round when we meet Alex in just a second. He's also gonna give us a few tips to pick your tree, to take care of it, and then throughout the episode, we'll tell you about taking care of your Christmas tree as well. So let's find Alex and learn more. This is Alex. He's the president of the Boys and Girls Club Miami-Dade, and we are at their Christmas tree lot. Alex, thanks for having us here today. Thanks, thanks for being here. Of course. So tell me, what goes on here? Uh, this is a great time of year when we uh, do our annual Christmas tree fundraiser. We have about uh, seven years of history of doing this. Wow. And uh, the goal here is really to sell these trees and raise money for the Boys and Girls Clubs and all the programs that happen at all the six different locations we have. For those that aren't familiar, what does the Boys and Girls Club do? Well, I mean, our, our job is pretty simple. It's really to provide a safe place for kids when they're not in school to be with us. It is for every child from the age of five and up all the way to high school. We have teen programs specifically geared towards teen where we do career readiness and we do all these type of things where they're going to college, get them ready for SATs, all those type of things. The idea is to be that one-stop shop where kids can come in the afternoon and have a great, have a great time get new friends and at the same time just grow here. If people would like to help out the Boys and Girls Club or participate, how can they? Well, there's various options. Obviously, one is to volunteer. We're always looking for good mentors, whether it's with our sports programs, we need coaches, or um, just they want to contribute. And how can they find out more information about that if they'd like to? Well, they can either call us at 305-446-9910, or they can go to our website, bgcmia.org, and they can get more information, and we'd be more than happy to do that. I mean, we're only as good as a community that helps us out in the, in the corporations that get involved with us. That's great. Do you have anything else happening for the holidays? We have a lot of holiday parties at the clubs where uh, you know the kids get presents, and we have parties, and the idea is so they can have something before the holidays, yeah. before they, we, 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 they go home. So it's kind of fun to do that, and it's a big one big celebration at each, each different location we do that. Great. Well, we're going to take a look around, give some people some Christmas tree care tips. But before we continue on, do you have any basic tips that you want people to know when taking care of their Christmas tree that they get here? Well, yeah, there's a couple tips that you really need to look for when you're buying a tree. One is you want to kind of pull on that branch a little bit, make sure that the needles aren't falling off. That's a sign of freshness. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is once you get it home and you put water in it, make sure you put first time warm water. Mm -hmm. um, that helps break the sap down so that you can suck a lot of water up. Okay, great. Well, we're going to share some more tips along with you. Alex, thanks for having us here today. And uh, keep watching SoFlo Help. I'm back at Crew Lab, which means that I am joined once again by Dr. Kyle Krupa. Come on in, Doc. And uh, we are going to go through a bit of a series over the next three weeks. We're gonna talk about ACL issues, which you might hear a lot about if you watch football. But uh, tell us, why do we need to care about the ACL? Uh, well, it provides the most stability to the knee, right? Okay. So we have a whole series of ligaments that are intertwined together, and we need to make sure that those ligaments are nice and taut, not loose, kind of any kind of grinding and anything like that in there. And mm -hmm. we need to make sure that the knee is as stable as possible so that you can generate power and force off that when playing sports. All right, and we've got a progression of three ways to treat or rehab an ACL that we're going to go over over the next few weeks. Uh, so give us a quick overview of what that's going to look like and then what am I going to do today? Sure. Early phases are going to be restoring range of motion and making sure that we have good blood flow uh, going to the knee and making sure that there's no excessive scar tissue that's laying down. Mm -hmm. The second phase is going to be adding more stability to the knee and then the third phase would be adding more explosive return to sport, uh, being able to decelerate, pivot, those types of things. So if you have pain in the knees, creaky knees, this can be helpful. Yeah, all the things that we do today are going to apply to any type of knee issue that you have uh, and whether it's post-op or not operative at all. Okay, so. cool. Let's get started. Sure. What are we doing? We are going to get into grass and first, okay? So I'm going to show you what that looks like using some tools. Let's do it. All right, so first thing, I'm just going to roll this up. Sure. You're going to bend the knee. Then I take a tool like this. This is called a grass and tool. Okay. Yeah. 
and then this is actually going to help bring blood to that area. So I'm going to go right over the top of the scar tissue mm -hmm. and try to realign that feels some of the strange. Right. Yeah, it kind of feels like Rice Krispies underneath yeah. there. And what that's doing is it's feeling where there's rigid pieces of collagen that are laid down. Mm -hmm. uh, it lays down what's called haphazardly. So it mm -hmm. lays down in this like waffle type of formation and we're trying to realign those scar uh, fibers, those collagen right. fibers. So yeah, I see what you're talking about is a little redness. I feel like, like a warm sensation. Um, and what it felt like was as if I'm trying to think of like a good way to think about it. And it reminds me of like a bungee cord or like a like a resistance band mm -hmm. when you when you feel like that it separates just a little bit. Right. Uh, when you like have them in your hand or a rubber band, you kind of feel like that the you know the separation between it. That's kind of mm -hmm. what it felt like, like a little bit of yeah. back and forth. You're, back, right? you're, yeah, you're opening up the elasticity of the tissue as well, right? Mm -hmm. So so as we're putting that tissue on stretch and then now putting a, a application of pressure over the top of it, we're mm -hmm. kind of filling in that area with fluid. Okay. So so when when would somebody feeling. need to do Graston like this? Somebody would need to do Graston if they're feeling stiffness in the tendons, stiffness in joints, if they're feeling uh, scar tissue that's laying down in that area, mm -hmm. they're feeling like um, adhesions in that area or trigger points, that type of thing. And we could go over it with a Graston tool. We'll wrap this up here today, but what will we see next week when we take this to the next level? Uh, we're actually going to be activating the muscle tissue with neuromuscular re-education and driving an electrical current into that muscle and making sure that it gets firing at 100%. Okay, great. Uh, if people want to learn a little more about this, how can they? Uh, they can visit us at crewperformance.com or on Instagram at crewperformancelab. Okay, thank you so much. We'll see you next week as we take this to the next step. Coming up, turmeric, coriander, cumin, and all of the healthy spices of Indian cuisine are in these dishes when SoFlo Health returns. on you innovations in modern medicine from your team of experts at U Health the University of Miami Health System when her older sister's memory started to wane Carolyn Banks wondered about her own brain health forgetting some words forgetting some names you know I was just concerned Dr. Margaret Parachek Vance a human geneticist and director of the John P Hussman Institute for Human Genomics says research shows Miami-Dade County has the highest prevalence of Alzheimer's in the country Hispanic and African Americans have a one and a half to two-fold increased risk of Alzheimer's compared to people with non-Hispanic European individuals the goal is to identify people people early enough to identify those at the highest risk and then be able to intervene and prevent the process. Here in the lab at the University of Miami Hussman Institute, researchers work with blood samples to sequence genes. The goal is to help identify the causes of Alzheimer's and to develop treatments and therapies for all populations. Participation in diverse studies like the Dawn Project is key. Carolyn joined to further the research. We did something with some numbers, with some drawings. Exercising your brain and social interaction is critical. Carolyn stays active through her church. She hopes her involvement and UM's work will help others like her sister. We need to be engaged, to be educated. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. We're at the Boys and Girls Club Miami-Dade Christmas tree lot. If you want a tree, you'll have to act quickly because they'll be gone within about a week, we hear. And earlier, Alex told us how to pick a tree. But what do you do once you pick the tree? Well, you need to cut off about a half an inch from the bottom of the tree, also known as the trunk. And you might hear the chainsaws around us here today. That's exactly what they do right here for you. But once that's been done, you need to get that tree into water within about a six to eight hour window of time. And how much water, you ask? Great question. That depends on the diameter of the trunk. For every inch in diameter, you need to add one quart of water, preferably warm water, like we heard earlier from Alex, to help break down any sap that may have built up and so that your tree will drink it up nice and quickly. Now, we've got some more SoFlow health ahead. In fact, here's a little bit of a sneak peek of what we're doing next week with a special guest. This is the rink at Las Olas Oceanside Park. It's open from now until January. And to learn a little more about it, I spoke with a special guest because after all, this is water, you know, ice, water, frozen water. So I brought H2O host, Olivia Ray, 
And as a water expert, this is not water. Or <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, yes, uh, but that's not the only reason we brought you over here today. You do have a show coming up. I do, yes. Tell us about it. I'm super excited. Y'all get ready because we have another holiday show for you guys for SoFlo H2O. It's going to be on December 10th at 4.30. Mm -hmm. We're going surfing with some Santa, so we're going to actually hit the water. And we're going to whip up a nice lobster dinner for a South Florida Christmas dinner. So a lot going on that I'm really excited about. Yes. Before I let you go, something that I think would be good for the SoFlo Health audience to hear from you. You're a very fit individual. You've done lots of fitness stuff with us on the show. Um, what do you do in the holiday time? So if it's uh, Hanukkah coming up, mm -hmm. Christmas. Um, a lot of what would holidays. you be doing to make sure to take care of your health during this period of time? Anything different or is it the same? So on the actual day, I still like to get a little bit of workout in, but I like to do like a HIIT workout. So a short 15, 20 minutes, get your heart rate up, mm -hmm. get your body mm -hmm. active, and burn a little bit of calories before you go and enjoy those meals. Because we all know we like to indulge a little bit of course. on the holidays. Do you incorporate the family? I do incorporate the family. I honestly, I love getting the family active, and sometimes I'll do a little Instagram Live, and I'll yes. get everybody to do a HIIT workout with me. Because oh, I'm like, nice. let's all get active together before we go eat. That's great. Well, Olivia, thanks for joining us out here today. Uh, you'll see us uh, here at the rink next week. But you will see Olivia on SoFlo H2O when? December 10th at 4.30, so don't miss it. So watch SoFlo Health, then you can watch H2O, then SoFlo Home Project. It'll be a whole Sunday of SoFlo on December 10th. It's amazing. Olivia, thanks for joining. Uh, let's go for a lap. All right, let's we'll try see, this. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll try. We'll see Watch you how we do this, y'all. <sighs> Here in South Florida, we're lucky to be able to have cuisines from all over the world, and we get to enjoy the health benefits of all of those cuisines. One we don't see as often is Indian, but that's where we are today. It's a restaurant that is new to the Wynwood area. It's got delicious Indian cuisine, and if you just think about some of the spices they use in their cuisine, like cinnamon, coriander, turmeric, cumin, and so many more, they're practically medicine. So let's go find the chef and learn more. I'm now joined by executive chef Nanad. Yes, chef, sir. Yeah. thanks for having us in today. Nice to meet you. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Welcome to Rich Dad. Oh, thank you very much. I hear it means family. Is that true? Yep. Very cool. I feel very welcome here, so you're doing a great job with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you're going to make some food for us today, yeah? Yes, sir. What's the first thing that we're going to see? I'm going to make you one appetizer. It's made with uh, eggplant and uh -huh. sweet and sour chili sauce. Okay, great. Let's get to it. Yep. And we get some onions and bell peppers. Onions and peppers here. Yep. And some garlic. We're gonna use the bell pepper and onion in there. All right. So we saute for like two minutes. So now we're going to add some Indian spices. All right. Those are all spices. Hey, you got a ton Every, of spices over here. Everything has a different, different work. Like those are kind of medicines. Okay. So we're gonna add some cumin powder. Cumin. Some coriander powder, some turmeric powder and some salt. Perfect. I love that idea behind that. Everything's got a purpose. It's all medicine. Yep. It's all good for you. Everything is like, this will not gonna make you bad. You're right, right. Like whatever Indian food you're gonna eat. And what's this that you just added in? That's a uh, sweet and sour chili sauce. Sweet and Those sour chili sauce. Those chilies, they don't have a spiciness. Mm -hmm. Like, they work like paprika. Okay. Those are the better fry eggplant. Man, I've said this many times before, but I wish we had smell a vision because this smells delicious. You can smell the, now we're going to plate this. All right, so now we're gonna plate it. What's that around the plate there? The, we have a tomato and butter sauce Ooh. with uh, some microgreens. Great. This looks great. Chef, what do you say I meet you outside with this and you've got some more things to show us, yeah. right? I will I'll get ready some of those and I will meet you outside. Great, I'll meet you out there. Here we go. Coming up, is walking on sand better for you? Find out and see the finished dishes of Rish Tadar after the break on SoFlo Health. It would be a shame if something were to happen to it. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie at the Boys and Girls Club Miami Dade Christmas Tree Lot. We're giving you some tips to take care of your live Christmas tree once you've picked one. So you've got it in your house, it's in water, and you're happy with it. Great. Now, where do we put it? Well, it might be tempting to put it by a window to get that natural light hitting it. However, that's going to dry out the tree, so you want to avoid as much sunlight as you can. 
Plus, you want to keep it cooler. The hotter the tree gets, the faster it's gonna go bad. The cooler it is, the longer it'll last for you. It's kinda like us in South Florida. Well, Chef told me to go wait outside, and I did, and this is what happened. This yep. looks amazing, Chef. What am I looking at? What's on the table here? Goa chili bacon. That's what we made with you back there. Yep. Yep. We have a lamb chop masala wow. with uh, all, all Indian spices, and we have a vegetarian option and mm -hmm. vegan. Mm -hmm. It's uh, aloo gobi matar, and we have palak paneer. It's uh, spinach with the uh, cottage cheese, and you have some chicken tikka kebab. It has uh, all like tandoori spices. I'll help you with the Medicines. Yeah, yeah. As you're saying, like back yep. there, you, all these different spices all, you use, they're all like mm -hmm. their own little medicine. A lot yep. of them are anti inflammatory. Yep. A lot of them help you Each with digestion. Each every dish has those spices. Yeah, that's great. And you have basmati rice, mm -hmm. that's the Indian grain long rice. Yes. And then, of course, some naan. And there's some naan. Oh, looks great. I can't wait to mm -hmm. dig in. Yep. I'm ready to. Uh, in fact, off camera, I was about to uh, get ready with my table setting here. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, if you want to enjoy like true Indian culture, uh -huh. You just gotta use your hands. Yep. Is that the case? Yes. So where do I start? Start with the first serve your rice. Okay. So I just grab with my hands? No, with the oh, spoon. Okay. Serve your rice with your spoon. Sure and it. you're gonna eat with your hands. Okay, I'm gonna eat with my hands. Yeah. All right, so let me grab this here. Mm -hmm. And then what's next? Appetizer, go with chili bacon. All right, I'm just gonna grab one here. You can take with the spoon. Take the spoon too? Yeah. Oh, here I go. Oh my God, that's so good. You can take with a spoon in your plate, and then you start with your hand. Okay. So now use your five fingers. <laughs> okay. And mix it how you want it with the five fingers, mm -hmm. and take it like this, like small. like a little like yeah. a like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna mix it, and you can enjoy. It. Oh my God. That is so good. That's how we eat. Now, obviously, we've got some uh, Indian food in front of us here, mm -hmm. but for those that aren't sure uh, what kind of food you serve here, how would you describe the cuisine? North Indian authentic cuisine. Mm -hmm. We and make everything from the scratch, mm -hmm. and everything is authentic. You also have some other things that you add on to the restaurant besides the food. I think yeah, I saw henna We have earlier. a henna on every week Friday. Mm -hmm. Saturday night, we have Hollywood night. Yeah. And those things are every week we have. And if people want to learn more about um, when those events are taking place, or they want to learn more they, about the restaurant, how can they? They can look for in the Instagram. We post every single day. Awesome. But Chef, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, sir. Yes, thank you. Too. Enjoy. Right. I've got more to eat. On SoFlow Health, we talk about the benefits of going for a walk a lot. In fact, probably too much. But I've got a better option for you. Follow me. Hey. I said follow me. For today, you won't need these, so get rid of them. All right, now that you've ditched your shoes, remember what the Urban Barefoot once told us right here on SoFlo Health as well. This is a good time to actually grip the ground with your feet. And like Dr. Sam once told us, if you walk one direction on the sand, you'll definitely want to walk the same distance the other direction, because if you're on the beach, you're likely on some sort of a hill, incline, decline, and you want to make sure that you balance out the force that's being put on your hips. All right, let's get moving. As you get closer to the water, two things. That steep decline we were just talking about and the sand will also be firmer. So if you're using the beach as your source of sand and you want it to be more firm, go by the water. But remember, you have to compensate for that decline. If you're gonna use the powdery white sand, that's still a factor, just not as harsh, and you'll get more of an unstable surface, which will help you burn more calories and be softer when landing on your joints. Have you heard about the principle of walking or running head over foot? David Weck, the inventor of the BOSU ball, is a big proponent of head over foot. He calls this your spinal engine because when you're going head over foot, it's kind of like a piston going up and down, up and down. You want the same principle while going for a walk or run. It's kind of like adding a little swagger to your step. So what that looks like walking towards you is head over foot, head over foot, head over foot, head over foot. It's like a little swagger and you don't have to be so dramatic. I'm just doing so for demonstration. Now, if you're all excited to go for a walk or a run on the sand, then there's a few things you need to know. So meet me by the water. Things that you should be mindful of are sharp coral like this or shells. This is actually a shell, not a coral. But be careful of those if you're walking around. You should be fine most of the time. Be careful of broken glass or debris that is left out by unsavory folk. And of course, the sun. The sun's gonna be beating down on you, so make sure you're protecting yourself from it however you prefer to do so 
we recommend that you use some sunscreen. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, enjoy it and get that walk on. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and we're wrapping up our time at the Boys and Girls Club Miami-Dade Christmas Tree Lot. We've learned how to pick a good tree, how to make sure that we get it home safely and get it the water that it needs, and then how to make it last a little bit longer by keeping it away from the heat and keeping it cool in your home. Now, how do we decorate it? Frankly, I'm not exactly an expert on design, but somebody that is, is SoFlo Home Project host and design expert, Elena Capra. So let's check in with her to see what's happening later today on SoFlo Home Project. What's up, Elena? Hi, Hunters. So as we get older, we appreciate the comforts of home that much more, which gave us a little bit of design inspiration. Later today on SoFlo Home Project, we have a bedroom makeover that will inspire you to live out your golden years in style. Thanks, Elena. Now, I might not know anything about design, but I do know how to at least make your tree last a little bit longer once you do decide to decorate it. The name of the game is heat. If you're going to put lights in your tree, which it's Christmas time, you should, you make sure that you choose lights that are cooler and not emitting as much heat. These days, we have LED options that are much lower in emitting heat. And if you don't have LED lights, try to use mini lights. It'll look nicer and last longer and emit less heat onto your tree. Otherwise, Figure out the rest because I'm no design expert, but I could hang some stuff on a tree if you give me some ornaments. That's all we have for this week's episode of SoFlo Health. Thanks so much for watching. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlo Health on SoFloShows.com. You can also follow us using at SoFlo Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. Until next week, it's goodbye and good health. Next week on SoFlo Health, Dr. Kyle Krupa electrifies my leg for the sake of my knee's health and we learn why postpartum care is essential for women's overall health. That and more next week on SoFlo Health. We'll see you then.